Good morning, dear children. So we continue with Daniel this morning, and uh, we're in the Old Testament. I don't know that I mentioned that last week, but we're in the Old Testament of the prophets. And so chapter 3 of Daniel, and we're going to cover more about him today and uh, and uh, fiery furnace. So we we'll talk about that. Let's first go over here. It's the same word as last week. Psalm 119.11. Thy word, and the word that comes from him. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against you, O Lord. And so these three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we're going to find out just how faithful they were to the Lord God. And that's what this story is about today, and how angry Nebuchadnezzar can get. You know anybody who gets really, really angry and hot? So we're going to talk about uh, Nebuchadnezzar today. So let's do that. So Daniel 3, that's where we are. This is the first uh, verse in Daniel 3. Follow on here, Nebuchadnezzar, it's a long word, right? Nebuchadnezzar, he's the king, the king of Babylon, but he took over uh, Israel, uh, as we learned last week. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. Ooh, <laughs> okay, let's see. Whose height was 90 feet. That's really, really high. That's way high. And how wide was it? It was nine feet wide, so 90 feet tall and nine feet wide, yikes. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And the King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to all of his folks, all the officials, the satraps and the governors and all those folks, read that to find out, and all the provinces to come to the dedication of, of my statue to me. That's basically what that is. And sure enough, look how big that thing is. We've got trumpeteers just hooting and hollering on that. And, and some dust at the bottom. Look how big and ominous that thing is. Wow. All right, so then a herald came out. That's a, an edict from the king. And it said, To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations and languages, that the time you hear the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and psaltery, all in symphony and all kinds of music, you shall fall down and you shall worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has placed. Yikes! Okay, <laughs> remember, they're in Babylon, and they don't know who our God is. And, and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, they're there, and they know God, and they're trying to explain to these people who their God is, you know, but they're, they don't want any part of that. So Nebuchadnezzar built this giant thing for himself. Uh-oh, what else did Nebuchadnezzar say? And whoever does not fall down, uh-oh, and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Yikes, you ever burn yourself on a stove or a fire? Ugh, how about being thrown all together into a fire? Oh, that would be tragic. Yikes. Anyway, we're still in Daniel. Look how big that thing is. Holy cow. 90 feet tall and 9 feet across. And so everybody's, everybody's bowing down except, oh, except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And don't you know some of those folks were down there going, what's up with those guys? What, why, aren't they, why aren't they bowing down? They're, they're bad. They're, they're going to be cast into the furnace. So sure enough, we get some tattletales. So about that time, some certain Chaldeans came forward and accused those Jews. They spoke to the king and said, Hey, king, live forever. Oh, king, live forever. With all the grace and mightiness that you are, live forever. Uh, there are some certain Jews out there. You know them. You set them over the kingdom of Babylon, king. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they do not serve your gods, to worship or worship the golden image which you have set up. I think it's interesting that they say, these are your gods, king. You know, I, I don't know that I subscribe to them either, but, but they're your gods. I mean, and they're not, they're not following your gods, right? So Nebuchadnezzar just gets furious about this because that's the way he wants things. In a rage and fury, he gave them a command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought him in before the king. Nebuchadnezzar says to him, so this is them in front. Here they are, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Here's the king. And look how, look at that statue in the background. It's so huge. These graphics do that really, really well, the, the folks who, uh, who created that. Anyway, he said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods 
or the worship the image, the gold image that I set up. Now, listen, you two or you three, look. If you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, and you do, and you fall down, and you worship, good. That's a good thing. That's what I want you to do. However, if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a firing, burning furnace, burning, fiery furnace, and... <laughs> Who is the God who's going to deliver you out of my hand? In other words, he's taunting the Lord. It's, it's, it's beyond Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now he's like saying, hey, who, who is going to, who's going to take you out of my hand? I'm running the show is what he's saying. Oh, yikes. We don't want to do that. Don't want to ever say something like that because God's like going to teach him a lesson. You know, and so, and it, wouldn't it just last Last Sunday, we talked about um, how God helped him, and, and, and he praised that God of, of Daniel, right? <laughs> but here he is. He, he all of a sudden just has blankness about who this God of Abraham is. And so we're going to find out about that. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king and said, let's check this out. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you at this time. What? We're not going to answer you. That, that's, that question's ridiculous. We're just not going to answer you. Look, if that's the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire and furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. However, if that's not the case, no problem. Let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Isn't that, that is faith, people. You're going to go before this, this king and say, look, he, you're going to cancel what he just said. And, and the king, of course, would be astonished and certainly angry about that. That these guys are just, are just going to blow me off and not honor me. You know? But they worship God, not Nebuchadnezzar, and certainly not a gold image. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, of course, as expected, and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times hotter than normal. Seven times. Wow. So like a fire is hot enough, right? But let's just, let's just really stoke that puppy and let's get it smoking hot, right? So it just incinerates. So sure enough, here's the fire and here are the guys, look, they're all bound up here. And, and read what it says. Therefore, because the king's command was so urgent and the furnace was exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed the men who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They cooked the guys that took them up. <laughs> well, why didn't it cook Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? We're going to find that out here in just a minute. So these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down into the fire, all bound up, because you've got to read the rest of the story to find out. They were all bound up, and they fell down into the fire, so they're down in the fire now, right? And normally, in a super hot fire, you're going to cook. You're going to burn up, right? King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. Hmm. I guess he was looking in there. Let's see. Yeah, there he is looking. And, and he rose in haste and said, Hey, did we not? These are two of his kids. Did we not cast the three guys into the fire? Yes, sir. True, king. We sure did. We did. Well, look, look, look. I see four men loose walking around in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And there is the form. See, there's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But who's this, who's this fourth character? And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Interesting. Interesting. How would he know to say that? And so, sure enough, here's this, this fourth figure, this fourth being, and he sees it clearly. There's clearly four there. So Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the fire furnace and said, Hey, hey okay, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the, of the Most High God. Now he's, now he's all like, okay, I believe. I, this is, by the way, the second time. We've got to go back to the first. This is the second time. I believe in the Most High God. Come out here and come over here to me. 
Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And all these satraps and administrators and governors and rulers and all that and their neighbors, they gathered together and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair on their head was not singed and their garments were not affected and they didn't smell like smoke. Now how do you explain that? So sure enough, they welcome, here's uh, Nebuchadnezzar welcoming them. People are like just stunned. Look at the kids are like, whoa, I just saw them throw them in there in the fire. Oh, how, how is this possible? <laughs> then Nebuchadnezzar, with a changed heart and mind, says, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel, ding, 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 and delivered his servants who trusted in him, just like you and I trust in the Lord. And they have frustrated the king's word. This is him talking about himself. They have frustrated what I have said and all that I'm trying to do here. But... I see that he's really powerful. He's certainly more powerful than I am. So I'm going to give him some glory about that, but isn't that cool? He that frustrated the king's word and have yielded their bodies that they should not serve or worship any god except their god. Isn't that cool? And so therefore, I make, this is him, Nebuchadnezzar still, I make a decree that any people, nation or language, which speaks anything amiss about the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces, ooh, diced and sliced, and their houses shall be made into an ash heap. Holy smoke. Because there is no other God who can deliver like this. I'd say that was a changed mind, but is it a changed heart? We're going to see next couple of weeks, okay? So keep an eye on Nebuchadnezzar. Keep reading. We're in chapter 4 next week, okay? So, you know, as, as Christians, we come and go in our faith. We, the more and more we learn about him, the more steady we are, the more, the more consistent we are. But if you're just introduced to the Lord, you're going to fall away and come back, and fall away and come back, and fall away and come back. It's, it's a learning process. It's a process of sanctification where we're made more holy each time. And so poor Nebuchadnezzar, he's just been introduced to the God of Abraham, our God, and, and he's just learning the power and the awesomeness of the Lord. But he hadn't really accepted him as his God yet because he's still, he's still into Babylon and all the things of himself. We're going to find out more about that next time. Anyway, the king promotes Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Isn't that cool? So sure enough, I mean, to pull him back out and all these, all these uh, Chaldeans who narked on him, they're, you know, they probably got wasted, okay? They probably got killed. Nebuchadnezzar probably put them away. So it got pretty, pretty harsh back then. So the question was, who is this? Who is that? Was Jesus in the fiery furnace with them? So much debate over this. It it's, has very different opinions and meanings to different people. I urge you to study it yourself. And so some much debate. Some Bibles, uh, the KJV and NKJV, say Son of God, capital letters. All right, that would mean Jesus. While most others say small son of small gods, okay? NIV, NAB, NASB, and, and ESB. You go research it on your own, okay? And you come up with your own conclusion. Don't forget to ask the Holy Spirit to help you with that, okay? Uh, similarly, some theologians say the figure was the pre-incarnate Christ, Jesus, okay, before he came down to earth, because it was in the Old Testament. And others say he was the angel of God. Nebuchadnezzar said, he sent, who sent his angel, right? So that was right there in the verse we just got through reading. But in Matthew 17, 2, we see the transfiguration. Go read that. So Moses and Elijah and Jesus, where Jesus transfigures himself right there in front of those folks, and it just blows them away. Is, was it that kind of an image as well? You know, we, we don't know the answers to that. We won't know that till we get up to heaven. Wouldn't that be cool? We get the answers to all this, what Jesus wrote in the, in the sand, and answers to things like this. That's what we look forward to is really, really, really learning. But down here, we get the word, we get to study, dive into it, learn more. Next week, Nebuchadnezzar dreams another dream. Here we go again. This is a tree. Look how crazy that tree is. It's green on top and green on the bottom. It's provides plenty of shade, but what's happening here? 
We'll learn that next week, okay? It's really cool. More lessons, okay, for, for uh, Daniel to interpret, and we'll get that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, uh, help us to be more consistent with you, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, to honor you, to worship you, and to keep our idols away. Um, holy smoke, our, our phones, we're getting ready to go to school. Um, to stay focused on you in the midst of all of our friends we haven't seen in a long long time to to honor you by reading your word and to studying you lord jesus keep us safe continue that we do worship you and honor you as our lord and savior in your name we pray and believe amen all right dear children so we'll see you next week looking forward